This is Death's Gambit. I'm playing on PlayStation 4, but it's available on other platforms. Uh, this is very much a Dark Souls type experience, but in the style of a 2D combat of platformer. So we have these sort of shrines that we go to and we're able to increase our abilities and our skills and we level up, we get better. Uh, you collect souls in order to do this. You can reclaim your lost plumes too. Those are special items. You can augment your feathers to increase them. Uh, use abilities for that. And then you have your abilities kind of list. So you level up. Uh, this is early after the first boss where I fought this very gruesome, ugly looking owl thing. Uh, so it's not too far in it, but I have been playing quite a while uh, at you know, this particular playthrough because you do tend to die a lot. Uh, finally. Up here. So uh, this is very much like Salt and Sanctuary, if you're familiar with that game, which is really good and definitely worth checking out. But it's a little bit more no. linear in Just terms of style and a little bit more heavily focused on the narrative elements. Uh, yeah, it's also very reminiscent of Dead Cells, which was a recent release. I don't know if you might have played that, but that is a roguelite. Uh, I'd say the combat fluidity kind of feels similar to that. So we're in a more uh, narrative heavy focused area. There's not a lot of villains, or villains, but enemies around because this is more of like a calmer hub area. You get around on this really badass horse. And, uh, yeah, it's quite something. Ooh. Is it possible to learn this power? And then you get a new ability. So first off, we have this kind of main area here. This is our inventory where we have our abilities and uh, the items we have and food we can eat and stuff that gives us kind of, you know, the ability to fight harder. And then we're able to equip between two different weapons. Uh, I've got an axe, and now I've got a sword. I've also got a longbow and a shield if I want to use that for blocking. Uh, you have armor and equipment. So you can see your feats on the side. Uh, you level that up, obviously, by the souls as mentioned. There's talents that you unlock that give you bonuses. And there's also these special journals that you can come across that are kind of uh, secrets hidden throughout the world. I found this... Uh, one that helped me out with the Owl King and gave me 5% damage. That was very helpful. Ooh, crap. Uh, sorry about that, sir. <laughs> it was funny, there was this one uh, kind of merchant that you go and you buy from and I didn't buy anything and he like started attacking me and I had to kill him. It was, it was kind of intense. Anyways. Uh, yes, it's, it's a very interesting type of title. Uh, definitely very different in terms of what it provides. I think it's kind of fun, but it's also uh, really difficult too. You will die a lot. This is an interesting weapon. I don't know if I like this more than the sword or not. But it, it's very simple in what it provides. And, wow, okay, yep. And what it aims to do. So you die a lot. <laughs> and they have a lot of little cool secret areas to it that I find really interesting. Um, Basically, you uh, you have these spots that are kind of scripted segments. There's one where like a dragon comes and like burns the steps, and you can see there where things are falling. Another really neat part of this is how the story is intertwined in terms of you know the fully voiced dialogue that you're seeing as you're playing, and then when you die occasionally, you'll get these flashback segments to kind of patch together a story of what's going on uh, visually. I'm very impressed with, oh, there's our, our horsey, so we've got this really cool horse. Uh, you usually use it for riding, but right now it's in like a lower section that I kind of left it at while I'm exploring that town section, so, yeah. Oh, <gasps> what is that? But you're kind of getting additional context with these flashback segments that really help describe the character, add more style to the general thing it's really cool I'm going to the visuals uh, briefly go over that I love the the pixel art style I think it's uh, very distinct it's fluid it looks really cool uh, lots of detail in it and you gotta see lots of little kind of effects the things as you kill creatures or you die 
Uh, I think that was a really nice touch. I'll also mention that there are multiple classes to play as. Uh, this particular one is a Blood Knight. I've found it really cool, but there's a little option for everyone. And from there, you actually get to pick a like equipment type, which is really neat. And that really plays into your style of you know your playthroughs. So you can actually play multiple times and have different combinations going. So you're getting more context into the backstory, but it's a little bit more of a a loose bit of details. Watch. And I hope it's not its not really and spoiling it, it's just kind of People giving context. If you don't understand the first part of it, this doesn't really make any sense anyways. Like, if you haven't seen the first segment. So you're going around for these areas, you're cutting enemies down, you're grinding them up, you're dying, you're pushing forward, you're leveling, you're trying to just improve on your character and make it a little bit further every time. Until you're, you know, powerful enough to handle things. Cremation. One really not in the mortal oh. realm, no. I'm just kind of skipping through the dialogue quickly to get going back into the actual gameplay segments. And you're seeing, like, in the foreground, uh, there's a lot of things going on. You'll have, like, birds, there's lots of little sharp details, lots of different enemies to kind of fight against. Uh, you get these stronger abilities going on. Oh, okay, so I'm not paying attention. Uh. I'm looking for. Yeah, okay. That was not good. Obviously, we have rolling for that. And regain my health feather. Huzzah! And then there's obviously, you know, the platforming stuff. You climb on ladders and you try to go to different areas. Uh, this is where we go back to that concept of where it's like Salt and Sanctuary, where you have a, a freedom to explore, but it is a little bit more uh, focused in that regard. Uh, you, you generally know where you're going, which is really easy, and you're not freely left open like you are in that game, but I, it does offer a lot of freedom here. Ooh. Huh. That could be important. I need to call my noble steed. Hello. How are you doing? That's oh, a death around here. And then you can go off into different areas, different segments. It's, it's actually a really, really neat experience. Um, especially if you like this type of, again, going to that like Dark Souls, really intense, hardcore dialogue game and just keep pushing until you're better. Uh, this really does deliver on that. I was hoping this would be the kind of area that you can like connect to that other segment. But it's a lot of exploring, uh, taking a look at things. Hmm, I don't think I can make that. A lot of patience too, as you try to make it through sections. Oh crap. Uh. There we go, that's what I wanted to open up. As I die, I become more powerful than you could ever imagine. But there's a lot of little technical things to it as you collect armor, uh, you rest, and you continue to... I don't have enough points for anything. But you get what I'm saying. It's, it's very much a live, die, and repeat kind of setup. As I'm getting poisoned fighting this guy. Yeah. And obviously different weapons, you know, offer different things. I wonder if I can actually go in this cave up here and take a look. Did they get me while I'm going up the ladder thing? Of course they did. But you're getting that sense of death a lot. And I, I might not just be great at this either, but you get the point of it. So there's a lot of strategy to it as you, like, kind of block and attack. And you've got to watch out for your stamina. <gasps> Soon, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> so dark. And then you can definitely see they put a lot of care into crafting uh, something that is so well detailed. Uh, one aspect I really don't like is that uh, the enemies respawn, so you're constantly dealing with that aspect of it. Uh, you know, these characters coming back and then you have to redo it. Especially if you die a bunch, it's like, wow, I have to redo this segment over and over again. Which I'm not a fan of. 
You gotta really balance out that stamina too, or else you'll die. Oh, I got poisoned to death. That's not good. At least my buddy's death's here. That's nice. So that's Death's Gambit. At least, you know, a good look at a bit of it. So you get an idea of how it plays and how it handles. That's just generally the experience is go, die, uh, come back, fight again. I should have opened it from that side. Damn it. Ugh. And then, of course, go and fight bosses, too. As I mentioned at the beginning with the owl monster guy. 